Order members, the sitting is resumed and it's time now for questions to the Minister for Education. We will begin with 15 minutes of topical questions and I call Maeve McLaughlin. Um, following the uh, Health Minister's announcement today on the inquiry into child sexual exploitation, can I ask the Minister uh, what communication has taken place um, from the Department of Health with the Department of Education and has he actually now agreed to the terms of reference? for the child sexual abuse inquiry? Um, the communications between both departments, I have to say, has been poor. Uh, I have been informed largely through the media in relation to both the establishment of the inquiry, uh, that the minister was hoping to involve the education and training inspectorate, I found out through the media. And I was informed at the same time as all other members this morning in relation to the minister's statement. I now have a copy of the terms of reference. I will study the terms of reference and then respond to the Health Minister in due course. I call Maeve McLaughlin for supplementary. Well, good, and I thank the Minister for that uh, clarification. Uh, can I ask also, in, in moving forward, one of the issues is about ensuring that the voice of children and young people is included in the inquiry, uh, what the Minister can do to ensure that those voices are heard throughout this process? Well, I, I want to ensure that the, the, the heart of the inquiry has to be about the protection of children. It has to be about protecting the most vulnerable children in our society, those children in care. And clearly, I am keen to play a, a positive role in an in inquiry going forward and ensure that the lessons are learned of the past. If there was mistakes made in the past, that those responsible uh, are held to account for that and that we protect our children going forward. In several consultations carried out to date by my own department, we have included children. We have used the offices of the Children's Commissioner in particular to ensure that the voices of children are heard. And I will be studying the terms of reference uh, with a viewpoint to ensuring that the children affected uh, and the children in care, there is a mechanism for their voices to be heard throughout this inquiry. I call Pat Sheehan. Oh I've got a last one, Corla. Uh, could I ask the Minister to give an update on his uh, department's fundamental review of uh, GCSEs and A levels and confirm that the recent announcement by Ofqual in London? Or in England relates to England only? Um, I, I launched a consultation process, uh, I think it was the 30th of September, I spoke to the House in relation to a report carried out by SIA in relation to the qualifications we conduct here. The recent announcements by Ofqual do only affect what is happening in England. Uh, neither affects our jurisdictions or Wales, and indeed Scotland has its own exam system. I call Pat Sheen. I thank the Minister for his answer. And I wonder, uh, is the Minister confident that we can retain a robust and transferable qualification system in the north of Ireland here, irrespective of what happens in England? Uh, I, I remain very confident that we can do so. We have a consultation ongoing at the moment. Uh, it follows on from the SEA report. That, that report found that there was not an appetite for, uh, to follow the, the examples of England at this stage. Uh, the consultation has put a number of options out to both educationists and indeed the wider community in relation to the direction of travel for exams going forward. But I am very confident that we will continue to have robust exams taking place in our society and that those exams will be able to be transportable and hold currency uh, regardless of where the student or the potential employee wishes to travel. I call Jerry Kelly. Is the Minister aware of the latest uh, report from the Social Mobility and Child Poverty Commission in Britain and what, has to, what it has to say about the narrow and the achievement gap and uh, resources which are needed towards deprived and uh, uh, low attaining pupils? Uh, I, I am aware of the Child Poverty and Social Mobility Commission's first annual State of the Nation report, which details its assessments of child poverty and social mobility in Great Britain and the efforts of the English, Welsh and Scottish governments in this regard. Uh, whilst the report does not include an assessment of the position here, the Commission's recommendations to raise the bar and standards and close the gap in attainment for lower attainers from both low and average income families are a particular relevance to my department and indeed have been of particular relevance to the ongoing debate about the Common Funding Formula Review. I call Jerry Kelly for some uh, um, 
Could the Minister maybe talk about other factors, or are there other factors which contribute uh, to the gap in educational attainment, um, as well as the socio-economic uh, conditions? Uh, yes, though uh, both local studies and international studies show that the, the, the single most determining factor of a child's educational outcome is its socio-economic background. But we have to challenge that. We have to resource our schools to be able to uh, face up to that challenge. But also, uh, we have to encourage communities and families to become re-involved in their children's education. There is far too many examples of where families or parents have had bad educational experiences themselves. They then are reluctant to, or not equipped to, become involved in their child's education. We have to crack that, and we have a number of community projects, uh, or community funding initiatives, uh, which are enabling parents and families to do just that. We want to ensure that the greatest determining factor in the school is the quality of teacher in the classroom, is the quality of leadership in the principal's office. And we are very, very lucky that we have many, many highly qualified and dedicated school leaders and teachers in our classrooms, and we have to continue to improve on that and learn lessons from that mm -hmm. as well. But the socio-economic background of a child is the single biggest determining factor at this stage in our society of determining the child's outcome, and we have to face up to that challenge. Can I remind members and ministers that uh, questions and answers should be addressed through the chair? Uh, can I call Michael McCoupland? Um, thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. And could I ask the Minister for his assessment of the progress made by Dundonald High School towards achieving its own set goals and the implication of that for the uh, continuance of the school? Um, it's quite clear that there has been strides forward in Dundonald High School, both through a combination of the dedication of the senior management team the involvement of the local community, and I refer to local communities taking ownership of their schools, and that process has clearly taken part in Dundonald. I have to make a decision in relation to development proposals affecting uh, East Belfast and parts of South Belfast, which include Dundonald High School. And I have to, one of the questions I am deliberating, deliberating on is this: Has the turnaround in the school taken place in time to ensure that there is a sustainable future for the school? I call Michael Copeland. Um, I, I thank the Minister for his, his encouraging words. Um, could he further inform me that, that, that the ingredients would be necessary to assist him in taking that decision? One of the reasons for the delay has been that there, during the, the pre-consultation period, uh, the Belfast Board did not consult schools affected by some of the proposals within the South Eastern Education Library Board's proposals. That has now been rectified. Uh, and those, they, those discussions came to conclusions in around late September. My department officials are now analysing all the data in relation to this, and I, I, I understand and I appreciate uh, the frustrations of the schools involved that a decision has, been, has not been made yet, but I want to make the right decision. I want to make a decision which is long-term and gives certainty to the community in, affected by these decisions of the... the geographical location of schools going into the future and the quality of those schools going into the future. I call Michael McGimsey. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister, uh, in terms of the provision of a new consolidated primary school in South Belfast, uh, Fane Street, Donegal Road and Sandy Row, uh, another major milestone has been reached with planning permission being granted for the application from the Belfast Board for this uh, uh, construction. Uh, could the Minister indicate when he sees this project going on to his capital programme? Um, we are continuing to engage with uh, five education library boards and CCMS in relation to the next announcement around the capital bills programme. Uh, I hope to be in a position in January, February time to make a further announcement uh, to the Assembly about further programme of bills going into the future. Uh, and I will keep in mind uh, the issues raised by the member in relation to the, the schools around South Belfast. And I accept there has been uh, delays in the past. I accept that expectations have been arisen within that community over a new build programme. But I want to make sure, whatever announcements I make, that it is definitive that the school building will go ahead and within a reasonable time frame. So we are continuing to work on it, and I hope to make an announcement in uh, January, February time. I call Michael McGimsey. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And can I thank the Minister for that answer, which, uh, again, I see uh, as very encouraging. Uh, uh, and just to uh, reiterate uh, what he has said, 
are we actually saying now that the new consolidated primary school will be in the, the mix as far as uh, the allocation uh, of cap at the capital programme stage will be uh, when, it, when it's made? In other words, that our, hat, our, our, our name is now in the hat. Um, there is quite a significant number of names in the hat. Um, I can assure the member that when I'm making my deliberations about a, a, an announcement around schools, that uh, the schools and the amalgamation she refers to will uh, be in my considerations. And I'm acutely aware, both through his representations and other members' representations, about the needs and the need to move on in relation to confirming uh, a building programme for that area. I call Pam Brown. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, can I ask the Minister for his Department's assessment on the sharing mobile classrooms for P6 and P7 um, pupils at Ashgrove Primary School in Newton Abbey? Um, I, I don't have it. I, I missed part of this. The sound doesn't seem to be quite good. It's an assessment of the sharing of mobile classrooms for P6 and P7s. I don't have an assessment in, in regards to that matter. If the member wishes to write to me and give me more detail in regards to the subject, then I would happily correspond with her indeed, or meet her on, on the issue. Uh, Pam Brown again. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for his answer and appreciate that he has in the background information here. Um, it's just given that you know, I'm sure the, the Minister does appreciate that each class requires their own classroom um, where they can receive the tailored teaching that they actually deserve. And, uh, I would be happy to follow up with the Minister and would be keen to see if and could be we have a question, please? amenable to um, additional funding being available to the school so that they can um, end the practice of sharing a mobile. Um, during the last uh, announcement around building programmes, one of the issues we did take into account was uh, when considering eligibility for announcement was schools with a high percentage of accommodation within mobile classrooms. I, and I do not have the details about the school you refer to. And I haven't finalised the criteria which we will use for the next announcement either. But we clearly want to take our young people out of mobile classrooms and put them into permanent structures moving forward. Uh, a significant number of our schools do uh, have composite classes in the sense that they share P6, P7 and, and, and other classes. It depends on the numbers of pupils at the schools. Some schools it suits to do that in terms of the numbers they have. But I certainly don't want to see a large concentration of pupils in any classroom. And I want to move forward to ensure that our, our accommodation for our children is fit for the 21st century. I call Chris Hazard. Can I ask the Minister to give an update on the Delivering Social Change Numeracy and Literacy uh, project, which involves the recruitment of uh, recently graduated teachers? Um, the the programme is moving forward well. It has been a huge task to take forward. And it is an example, I have to say, of when our executive and our, our different ministries work well together. We deliver change for the communities we serve. Currently, as of the 25th of October, there were 209 full-time equivalent teachers appointed out of a total of 273 teaching posts for the First and Deputy First Minister's DE schemes. Uh, we continue to, uh, the schools continue to advertise. There is continuing to be interviews taking place in terms of delivering and in putting newly qualified teachers into post. But it has been a very successful scheme. I have met a number of the appointees on my visits to a number of schools. Their enthusiasm is clear, and the delight of the schools being able to appoint newly qualified teachers is clear as well. I call Chris Hazard. Um, it certainly sounds like the scheme has got off to a very positive start, and if indeed this is the case uh, for the duration, is it the Minister's intention to extend um, the scheme? It will certainly be one of those schemes which I would like to be approaching the First and Deputy First Minister in the future uh, if there are further funds available through the Developing Social Change Programme to increase the number of newly qualified teachers we are using through this scheme. Indeed, my own department, I have put in place 2.3 million to expand the scheme for another 36 teachers to be put in place. So it, it is a, seem, a scheme that has been warmly received by our schools and by the newly qualified teachers. And it is a scheme that is making a real difference in young people's lives out there. And as I say, it's an example of when the executive works well together, how we can make a difference in young people's lives. Lord Morrow is not in his place. David McElveen is not in his place. And I call Fergal McKinney. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, and uh, can I thank the Minister for his answers thus far. Can I ask the Minister for any update on flexibility of school starting age? 
Um, I have asked my officials to come forward to me with proposals on how we introduce a flexibility into the school starting age. Uh, we, well, we do have a very uh, young starting age for our schools. I believe that the foundation stage allows our young people to develop at an appropriate rate and stage uh, within the appropriate education for their age group. Officials are currently examining proposals in relation to exceptions within the flexibility of school starting age, where parents can identify that a child is too young to start school, in their opinion. That we, one of the examples that has been used in the Scottish Borders area is that there is a panel established and that evidence is presented to the panel about the ability and needs of the child at that age and whether it should or should not be allowed to attend school at the regulated school starting age. So I'm looking at that to see if we can introduce a similar system here where parents who are concerned about the ability of their child to start school at the regulated starting age may be allowed to hold the ch child back for a year either in nursery provision or through some form of home tutoring. And that is the end to topical questions.